So if you love lemon pound cake, you're going to really like this recipe. It is a 1920 vintage recipe from the Ritz Carlton Hotel. Um, it was one of their favorite cakes they had there at the hotel. And it's it's just a it's a dense, lemony, uh, moist pound cake. And you know it's got to be good with all this butter in it. So, that's what we're going to be doing today. It's called the 1920s Ritz Carlton Lemon Pound Cake. And it's really good. So, let's get started. Okay, we're going to start out mixing our dry ingredients. We're going to mix them separate from our wet ingredients. We got three cups of all-purpose flour. We got a tablespoon of baking powder and three-fourths teaspoon of salt. And we're just going to stir this up good, get it mixed up real good. And then we're going to get a different bowl to cream our, our butter and our shortening in with our sugar. So let me set this aside. And here we got a cup of butter. And the recipe calls for half a cup of shortening. I don't use shortening, I use lard. So I'm gonna be using a half a cup of lard. And it's all at room temperature, and I'm just gonna break it up and, and stir it up good. And I'm just gonna do it by hand. Now, at this point in your, in your pound keg, if you want to, use an electric mixer. It'll be so much easier on your hands and your arm to cream the butter and your sugar up. I'm not going to use a mixer today. I'm going to try my best just to get this stirred up good. I thought my butter was a little bit softer than this. I'm going to put me a towel in here to keep my bow from sliding around. That might help. Now, y'all that's been with me so long, y'all know that I don't use Crisco. A lot of people do, and it, it turns, it makes a lot of dishes really good. But I use, I render my own lard, so I use lard. And that's, uh, that's just your choice of what you want to use. Either way, be good. Now, I've got three cups of sugar. We're going to pour it in here, and we're just going to cream all this together before we add anything else to it. So just mix it up good. The reason there's different steps to different cakes, especially a pound cake, is you do this extra steps to give you the crumb that you want, the texture you want. Um, it does make a difference. I know a lot of people say, well, you know, cooking isn't science. But I can tell you that baking is because you can mess up a cake real easy by not um, following the recipe or, or maybe overbeating or just anything. You can mess anything up. So I'm going to scrape down my spoon. And then we're going to start adding our eggs. And the recipe calls for five eggs. And that sounds like a lot of eggs, but it's what makes this pound cake so rich, too, besides the butter. And you want to do, the recipe says to add an egg and then mix it and then add another egg and then mix it. And just keep doing that till you get all five eggs mixed up. I take my eggs and uh, I put them in a bowl and then uh, I beat them just a little bit to get the the egg the uh, egg white and the yellow mixed up good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my bowl of five eggs and I'm just going to pour it a little bit at a time and then I'll mix it up good. You know a good pound cake. It's it's a really, it's one of them southern desserts. So many people have their grandma's old-fashioned pound cake recipes. 
and uh, most of them are pretty much the same. There might be, you know, one little thing different in them, like maybe a different extract or something. But they're pretty much all the same. Butter and eggs. I'm going to pour a little bit more eggs and stir them up good. And it's getting easier to, to handle the mixture now that I've got the eggs in there. And you can, you can change the taste pretty quickly on a pound cake by using different extracts. I don't like using, for instance, in this pound cake, we'll be using the zest of a lemon and the juice of one lemon. Um, if I had to, I would use lemon extract, but I really, I really don't want to if I don't have to because... To me, it does taste artificial. But if that's all I had, that's what I would use. And there won't be any vanilla put in this pound cake. It'll only be your, your zest and your lemon juice. So it's all come together really good. I got a good mixture here. So our next step is going to be to alternate our flour and our milk. And that's, an, uh, that's a whole other uh, way to get a good texture on your pound cake too, is to alternate. And you want to end up with your milk being your last. So I put a little bit of flour and I put a little bit of milk. And I'm just going to kind of fold and stir it together. But I'm not going to use a mixer on it. Because you could over mix it with a mixer. It's just one of them things that you take your time with. I'm going to put a little bit more flour. A little bit more milk. I tell you, a pound cake can go a long ways because you don't want a big old piece of it. And there's so many different things you can do with a pound cake. Mm -hmm. You can serve it with any kind of fruit, especially strawberries and whipped cream. Um, we do a dessert where you cut your pound cake really thin and uh, put cream cheese in between it, which is good. Now we're going to finish off our, our cake, pound cake batter. We got just a little bit of flour left and just a little bit of milk left. So let's put the last of our flour in and the last of our milk. Then we're just going to kind of fold it in. Because we've already done so much stirring and mixing it. You can easily over mix it. So just kind of fold it in good. And I have my two pan. I've got it greased and floured. You can use a bunt pan or a two pan, whichever you want to. I tend to use a angel food pan. I just like the way it comes out better, but that's just up to you. So we got this mixed up pretty good, and all we have left is our lemon rind of one lemon and the juice of one lemon. Mm-hmm. And they're in here. Mm -hmm. So it can't gain a full. Uh-oh. So now that we have that mixed up, let's put the rest of it in. And it smells really good. It smells really good and fresh. I love it when you use uh, no, they don't fruit juices or citrus. Um, got a couple of seeds in here. For your flavoring, not having to use um, artificial flavoring. It's going to be really, really fresh tasting. So we got it all mixed up, and that's all there is to it. Now we just get it in our in our pan. And like I said, you can use a, a two pan or you can use a bunt pan, whichever one you want. Put in this. Put 
button. Just make sure that you get them greased and floured good. <laughs> so I've got my oven uh, preheated to 350. And it takes anywhere from 50 to 70 minutes for this pound cake to cook. Uh, you probably want to check it at 50 minutes, but it's probably going to take 70 minutes in your oven. So you see, this is my two pan, Angel Food Cake Pan, and I've had this thing probably over 20 years, so it looks kind of rough, but it bakes good. So we're just going to get our batter in our pan. Scrape down the sides. See if I can get it in here without making a mess. I'm pretty good at making messes. Now with it being a, a dense batter, it won't seep through the, the bottom of the the two pan. If I had any reason to believe that it would, I'd just put some foil underneath. But it'll be okay. So just get your batter in here. Oh, are you watching that? And that's all there is to it. Now we know how dense a, a pound cake is, and, and that's one of the reasons it takes so long for it to bake, because it's got to get done through and through. So let's get it in the oven. Okay, our cake's out of the oven. It's good and cool now, and I'm going to take a knife, and I'm just going to go around the sides of it. Loosen it up a little bit. Go down the middle just a little. Get it loose from the, the inside. Now it should come right out of here. That's why I like using these uh, Angel Food two pans. Because I have such a hard time with, cake, with cakes like this, especially a pound cake or something. Um, Seems like when I go to dumping out, sometimes the top wants to stick really bad. And it just messes your whole cake up. So I'm just going to go around the bottom now and loosen it up. As much as I can. The sides have got, it's real, it's good and brown on the sides. And that's the why I like my pound cakes, it's good and brown on the outside. So it's sticky under here, but I'm going to try to get this up without breaking it in half. Especially when, I, when I'm cooking it like a socket to me cake in a, in a bunt pan, I have the worst trouble if it's the top of it sticking and you go dump it out and all the gooey stuff is still stuck to the pan. That's upsetting. But you see, there we go. Looks good. It's pretty. Good and brown on the outside. So now what I do want to do is I'm going to cut a piece. And when it comes to pound cakes, I like for it to have a good clean cut to it. And when I say that, I mean when I cut into it, I want it to slice easy and uh, I want the slice to come out clean. I don't want it crumbly or falling apart, especially with a pound cake. There's so many things you can do with a pound cake. And see, there we go. That was a good clean cut. It's holding together, it's moist. Let's taste it. It doesn't just fall apart everywhere. Now we know how dense a pound cake is. And it can be dense, but as long as it's moist and tender. And that is really a good pound cake. There's so much you can do with these. You can serve them with fruit, strawberries, and Cool Whip, um, cream cheese, just just anyways and it's a really good really good cake to take to a potluck
Well, guys, I'm going to make some uh, whipped cream to go with my pound cake and strawberries. But I want to show you this little gadget. I got this thing last year at flea market. And I never have showed y'all because I keep it <laughs> packed away. I don't really use it that much. But I wanted to use it today. Um, I've not been able to find a year model on this. But I don't know if y'all see me. Um, let's see if I can get this top off without making a mess. I should have just left it off. Okay. I use this all the time for mixing and when I'm doing recipes I'll use it constantly because it's got all the different uh, ounces and cups and and everything on it and it's a heavy duty and I just love it but this is what it came with this little electric mixer now I'm sure that this is what it was made for because it's only got one beater with it and uh, you could make butter with it. The only thing that when I tried to make butter with it, the motor got too hot before the butter uh, got ready. But it did make whipped cream. But I just want to show y'all how neat this little thing is. And uh, that's what it does. And it'll make whipped cream pretty quick. And it spits at you too. It's got these holes. So maybe you're supposed to cover it up with something. I don't know. But after a while, it quit doing it. So anyways, I'm going to make some whipped cream. If any of y'all know anything about this little mixer, let me know something on it. I had whipped cream within t less than two minutes. But I stopped it and I put some uh, vanilla and some uh, powdered sugar in it. You see as it gets thicker, it'll start up here in just a minute. But, yeah, less than two minutes. I, so it's a, it's a pretty good gadget. I don't know if I make them anymore. But I sure would like to know what your model this is. I might try to look it up online. Let's get us a piece of pound cake. Now, we done been into this, so we know it, <laughs> it's really good already. Now, I'll tell you something else about this cake. It cuts really clean. It doesn't crumble on you. It doesn't fall apart. It just cuts really clean. So good. Now, it, it has that hint of lemon, <coughs> excuse me, but it's not like pucker power lemon. It's just, it's got a beautiful crumb to it. It's dense like a pound cake should be. And I'm going to take just a little bit of my strawberry, uh, I make this strawberry puree that we eat it on um, ice cream and biscuits and everything. And I'm just going to put me a little bit of it on my pound cake because lemon and strawberries go really good together. And I'm going to put me some Cool Whip on some whipped cream on top that we made. And that looks really good. Wonder if we can get Mr. Brown to try a bite. Lemon pound cake and strawberries. Mm. Is it good? That's delicious. You're not fibbing, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know I'm honest. Lemon and strawberries go pretty good together, but it's just a good pound cake, isn't it? It really is. I hope y'all like this recipe. It would be a really good one, too, for a cookout. Y'all have a wonderful week, and God bless everybody.